Um, Dick, I'd like to come back to you and say, you know, we've, we've got this, we've got this blue bottle that these redox signaling molecules come in. Could you describe, I know we're, we're going to have some health professionals listening to this because uh, they, they love Dr. Dick Walker. And so to uh, explain what is a redox signaling molecule? What is this thing we're talking about and, and how does it work in the cells and why does it matter? Uh, you know, it all gets down to, um, I was just looking at the chat to see if there's anything we needed to uh, jump on, but it really all gets down to moving electrons around and accepting or giving up electrons. And, and that's how our body signals. Um, and so uh, redox signaling molecules are just a class of molecules uh, that come out of the uh, bottom of the Krebs cycle. Uh, many of them, if you're biochemically uh, aware, they're reactive oxygen species. Uh, and it's really um, the balance of those within the cells that accounts for the messaging. And I don't know if we need to be any more specific than that. I mean, if you really dig into the science, you're going to understand how absolutely foundational this these molecules are and how necessary they are to pretty much everything that goes on in your cell in addition to the detect, uh, repair, replace, um, you know, functions of, of what these molecules are, are really uh, great at. And, you know, one of the, uh, if you haven't read um, Dr. Osler's books, I would highly recommend them. And one of, the, one of the big pieces that I got out of, and I think it was your second book, was what we've been alluding to here. And that is, the reason why all of these other natural things that we do, whether it's a massage or lasers or, uh, you know, electromagnetic, um, you know, stimulation, they all work because they affect the redox cycle in our cells, the redox signaling in our cells. And I, I didn't put that piece together until, um, until I read Lee's book. Uh, so, you know, in that essay, in that, in that way, if you're if you're into <laughs> shortcuts uh, and you want to biohack your system and get some of the benefits of a lot of those things without having to uh, do them, drink Asia, um, drink Redox, supplement your body's supply of Redox signaling molecules, and let your body do with them what they're going, what they what they need to do, and what they're going to do. Um, so there's various ways of of getting at that. You know, for instance, I was talking on the, I was doing a conference call uh, with a woman, I think she was from Australia, um, who is involved with marketing a glutathione supplement. And I said, well, glutathione is good, but there's a whole lot of other things that are good too. And are you concerned about how much of that glutathione can actually get inside the cell? And because she had just told me about how they had proof that it raised the glutathione level in the bloodstream. And I said, well, that's okay, but really it has to get into the cell for you to get the benefits that you, that you need to get. Um, and guess what? There's other things that are important to your cellular health in addition to glutathione. And then I started to explain how redox signaling molecules also raised your intracellular glutathione levels, along with some of the other really important antioxidants, in addition to doing a whole bunch of other good things. Uh, and maybe if you're, I suggested to her that if she was going to talk about something that was a holy grail of cellular health, maybe she ought to further investigate redox signaling molecules in ASEA, because that's how I see it. I see ASEA as that holy grail, if you want to, um, you know, put a title on it, because it does so many influential things at the cellular level. And it does it in, in conjunction with, in line with all of the basic biochemistry of how the cells work. Um, and it works with the cell, not against the cell. And it doesn't push the cell in awkward uh, directions like some supplements and certainly many medications can do. Um, I, I tell people that there's absolutely no chance that a C at redox is gonna cause any harm. It cannot do that. Your body is never gonna use these molecules to do something detrimental. It's always gonna use them um, to do something good unless it doesn't need them. And then, you know, it, it's just going to fade into the background, but it's never going to cause any harm, um, no matter how much you drink. I think Ray has something important to say, so. <laughs> oh, no, everything you're saying is equally important by far. I just think it, it behoves us to, to emphasize why we are deficient and why we need to supplement 
Uh, and then also why it became a supplement. A little bit more on that, if I may. Firstly, mitochondrial density and efficiency peaks at puberty. So healthy puberty is when, and that was well proven long before the discovery of reductance and oxidants, which is where redox molecules is an amalgam of that. That was known long before. So the average decline is 1% per year from peak puberty. So we're looking at 10% per decade, trillions and trillions of molecules per second, per minute, per hour, per day, responsible for healthy functioning. And the redoxone is now known as well written in Dr. Lee's book to regulate and control the genome, the DNA, and therefore the expression of the genes as in um, what Dr. Lee referred to before in terms of epigenetics. So we are losing these molecules from peak puberty. Now, if you're a healthy, continue to have the right materials, maintain ideal weight, get your exercise, breathe clean air, drink clean water, then you might decline at 0.8% per year or 0.6, but you will decline because that happens to everybody. So that's why uh, uh, effectively, unless you are on this supplement, which is the only one that's ever been uh, successfully made at this juncture and stable to use as a supplement, you are deficient in these molecules. There are inadequate numbers and an, an inadequate balance to optimise your health. That's just the way it is. Uh, so the only people who have those adequate numbers or optimum for your health and that correct balance is people using a C-Redox because there's no other way. You can tweak it as Dr. Lee's explained, as Dr. Walker's explained, you can get a little bit more through other methodologies, go exercising, you'll produce more mitochondria, you'll make more redox molecules. In fact, many of the benefits of exercise are due to that very reason. So that's why we need the product. Um, and in terms of the flipping to a food supplement, therefore why we cannot make medical claims. There is no toxicity, as Dr. Walker has said. You can do no harm whatsoever. Find another supplement you can do that with. Uh, you can do no harm. These are made from sodium chloride, hydrogen, oxygen, some with nitrogen. They go back to salt water when they've done their signaling. So it's totally harmless. There's no toxicity. You cannot take too much. Uh, I had a gentleman yesterday who was given two bottles to try by somebody else, was going through the airport, told you're overweight, so decided his very first dose to drink an entire bottle. <laughs> so he did. <laughs> and, and then had no more after that because he ran out. <laughs> so I was talking to him only yesterday. So there is no toxicity. There is no allergenicity. Again, find a product um, that you cannot have any allergy towards. You know, it's really a very difficult find. So, and because they're made natively in the human body, you know, they're totally natural. So if you can't get toxicity, you can't get allergenicity, you can't get an LD50, the lethal dose at which 50% of the users will die, which every drug has, then how do you make it a drug? And it, it becomes logical not to do so. It becomes logical to do exactly what Virtus Norton did, and that is, well, how do we get this to everybody? How do we get it to market? How do we register it? And what's the best way to market it? And that's, he landed exactly where I'm sure all of us would have landed if we were traversing that same journey. 